Hello my friends on YouTube and elsewhere. Um, today I, uh, uh, an old man got visited by the Jester of Blades and oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and he hunted me uh, through my uh, through my sporting place with um, to show me uh, one of his latest inventions, uh, which is this one. Look at this! Damn. Um, I was curious how this uh, thing would feel when uh, when I first saw this on uh, when I first saw the project on um, Facebook, uh, YouTube, fa Instagram? Face Facebook. I think it's Instagram. Instagram was, Instagram. was the first first thing that you posted, and uh, it was uh, uh, it was something Dave, Dave Rawlings came came up with, right? Yeah, Dave Rawlings came to me and said, "Hey, wouldn't this be a cool project for you?" Mr. Mr. Jester, Mr. Jester, and you made it. Oh, wow! And it's really, it's really, really nice. So, so how how does this feel? Um, I think this one handles um, like the original halberd that I had the chance to handle when I was on the last Rhine event. Um, Falco Fritz from from Hamburg, Hamburg, uh, Hamburg. Um, I uh, got this original piece and uh, and brought it and it's it's a whammer and it's and this one feels like it actually um, I think uh, it still misses some lengths so we might need 20 or 30 centimeters more and then you have a perfect halberd simulator um, that's my that's my impression of this thing and it handles really 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 nice you you have um if you can control it you have a lot a lot of weight here but this is this is how the original handled well you have to say it's it's not intended for the average guy that just wants to try out halberd this is like a professional tool intended for professional use for people who really know their shit and really know what they do yeah uh, I think you can uh, you can use this in, in in full armor, and and then uh, and then the impact won't uh, won't matter won't matter so much. But if and you, it won't if, scratch if your armor, it, it, <laughs> won't, it won't scratch. Yeah, it won't scratch. It won't destroy the armor. It won't destroy it. Um, because so this is what what is it? Twelve millimeters. And twelve millimeters. Twelve millimeters of um, of um, of leather here. Well rounded, well rounded leather. And uh, Patrick actually, actually told me the anecdote that um, they tried. What was it? Klimtzüge? Uh, Pull-ups. Yeah, pull-ups. Yeah, they, they they hang this one somewhere and and tried to uh, try pull-ups with this, and and it held. So you see, this is actually very well constructed. I didn't try this, uh, so I'm 90 kilo or so. Um, <laughs> not sure how <laughs> was. Um, he was like about 90 kilos. I okay. Guess. So you can um, pressure test this very well. Nice thing. So is, is there a chance that uh, someone can uh, can pre-order this? Uh, definitely. Uh, if you if you'd like to pre-order it, mm -hmm. of course, anytime. Okay. Come towards me. Um, I will be implementing some changes mm -hmm. to to this Halbert based on the feedback I got from you. Based on the feedback, uh, I'm I'm on a tour through Bavaria and well, it's it's Hessen. Mm -hmm. Hessia, 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 Hessia. Uh, this sounds like a drug. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I I'm visiting several HEMA clubs and I'm getting their feedback on the Halbert and look what their feedback will be and then implementing changes mm -hmm. they see uh, they see on the Halbert. So so like uh, like like tapering. Tapering was one thing you you said, yeah. like like tapering the shaft. Yeah. So if you yeah you, you can imagine what what works for um for a sword also works for uh, for longer weapons. So if you um if you make um the shaft more thicker towards the end and bring bring in here more uh, more weight, uh, you counterbalance the head and uh, this makes the whole thing more uh, more agile. But and anyway, a, I think Spearfoot was Spearfoot, uh, yes. one suggestion you also made. Yeah, yeah. Couple, yeah. couple of people in my club also said they they'd like to have a spear foot or like a hook even even on. Oh, oh, there. wait, wait, wait. That's one thing. Uh, one thing uh, good to show. Let me see if we can. Ah, we can get here. Oh. So, <laughs> Patrick used a golf ball here in in front. So um, 
this is cool for uh, for not getting hurt too much. Um, but uh, yeah, we we thought about a rub rubber gum, uh, uh, like these rubber foots um, from from Black Armory. Yeah, I think they they will be very good for yeah. this, and 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 fit for that. You might also be able to extend uh, the the leather up here, so like uh, getting a leather blade made. In, like there are two, three, three screws here. You could, mm -hmm. you could end mm -hmm. the shaft here and yeah. then extend a, a leather blade and, and have a leather tip, like yes. on these stuff sacks. So so it will it will bend. Yeah, then. it would it will bend if you, out if you way. stab someone. But but it might um, but it might misplace mm. your your thrust a little bit, depending on how long the yeah leather. that's that's uh, that's yeah, possible. Is. So um but. Actually, that's one one of the things I uh, I like about the uh, um, the black armory um, uh, the black armory pole axis with um, uh, the I think it's what it's called MK two um, Mark two yeah Mark Mark two they are um, they are flexible so so you can step and, and that's good actually that's that's a quite good thing the MK one you can uh, they are very stiff and uh, if you want to step the other person has to wear armor or you yeah. have to you need to know what you do. Um, okay, so so you mean you mean uh, a, a leather like, a, like a built a dust sack <laughs> like like a, like, a, like a dust sack like yeah. one of the sandwich dust sacks up here. Okay, yeah, that's but that's, it might it might need um, some I might put need to put some salt in there because mm. this is twenty four millimeters and twenty four millimeter leather this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Lots to think about. Lots to think about. Yeah, I will. I will give you some uh, some of my uh, of my leather, which I have left some some excess leather, so you can experiment with this. I think. That's very nice of you. Okay, cool. So very nice. Um, I hope you enjoy our videos. Uh, oh, we we did a little bit sparring. Um, oh, I, I already showed this. <laughs> you already this showed the sparring part. I we cut it out. We Damn, cut it out. We cut it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we did we did some more <clears throat> we did some more things. Uh, Patrick uh, Patrick brought um, brought also um, some of these uh, Dusek with him. Prototypes, uh, prototypes, more pro <laughs> yeah, prototypes. Um, yeah, you wanna you wanna tell? Um, well, uh, we we plan to bring these to the market quite big, and we're we're thinking about how we could make the blade material. Like uh, we have leather, leather ones um, already made. Like Christian and I um, developed these these leather aluminium compound ones. Christian already came uh, or uh, was the first to come up with the idea to make these leather compound. Can you see this um, leather compound dust sacks? And we're looking for a way to get these these leather blades replaced or or having a a better way of manufacturing them for mm. for big time use. And Tom Hodges from Faceless Fencer was nice enough. Hey Tom! Hey Tom! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for this blade, this is your very blade you sent to me. Uh, we, we tested it a little bit today. Um, anvil test still to come. Mm -hmm. So I managed to um, destroy the other rubber blades that I, that I got made uh, for, for testing the, the rubber version. Mm -hmm. And I, I managed to destroy all the blades I got. And <laughs> Maybe maybe the the blade Tom has made for us is, is finally the answer for for the rubber blade problem. So uh, what what is this problem? Shall we shall we describe? Uh, shall we go in detail? Yeah, okay. let's let's go let's go in detail what uh, what our problem is. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if one can see this on this bed, but it's already it's already beginning here. It's a little bit developing, yeah. Yeah. Like it might be more obvious on the other yeah. rubber dust sack. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So this is a little bit softer, softer rubber, and the the blade is vanishing inside the frame, and it's bowing towards the front. And if this continues, it will just rip on the screw that's located here. It will just rip out, and the blade will be waste basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, the quality manufacturer I am, uh, I cannot <laughs> have this on happening on my dust eggs. No, it's it's an it's an imperfection. It it even doesn't even now here you he changed uh, you can see he changed uh, he changed it a little bit um, by, um, by by moving the screw to to the front, but even here it's it's already developing and. Um, if the curve is not the perfect curve, uh, it's 
not it's, a perfect it's not, dust it's not, egg. It's not a perfect dust egg. And we want to make perfect, <clears throat> uh, perfect weapons. And I mean, it's not, it's not the curving part alone that bu that's bugging me, but it's the the ripping part that's bugging me. I mean. Mm. They can be cheap to manufacture, they can be changed out, of course, you can yeah. use the frames as long as you like, they pretty much won't break. But if the blade breaks after like 15 bouts, that's a little bit too early for yeah. my taste. Uh, if, if for a weapon of, of, this, uh, of yeah. this price, of course. And that is why uh, we approached Tom Hodges to, to help us with this problem and I might need to implement some design changes uh, to, to actually get this problem. Mm -hmm. Solved in the future, but we will have, have it solved. Um, do you want to tell us something about these little holes? You see, it looks like snake bites snake here bites. On, on both both sides. Yes, uh, for the uh, the unaware user, uh, there will be spikes inset in the handle, and if you <laughs> grab it too tightly, they will protrude out and uh, poison your. Ah, you, you you mean there there's a there's a, a yeah the secure a, security if yeah right sensor right like when the wrong person holds the dust egg, mm. you can fence with it. No, okay. um, I. I had the impression that the handle could use a little bit more meat, mm -hmm. like a little bit more thickness. Okay. And but I wanted to leave people the choice to to have the thickness on there or just leave it like that and maybe wrap tape out of uh, around their handle. Mm -hmm. Like make these stuff like yours. They they are yours. Make them so they fit you. But I also wanted an option to put on handle scales on mm -hmm. the on the on the grip. Okay. And these two holes are threaded M4, and you can basically. Uh, it looks perfect. So, so you we just use the same same screws that uh, we use to to take this all together, and you can screw them in there, and um, then you have a more thicker handle. Yeah, handle scales. Um, I might also offer these uh, on my on my shop mm -hmm. uh, in the future, but. Really, it's meant for you to do whatever you like with it. Yeah, it's, it's one more option to, to yeah. customize, right? Yeah, so, right? So this can also have different colors, um, different materials. Um, I also was thinking if you might be able to um, to, to attach a handguard on there, like mm -hmm. uh, having a handguard that's protruding out here, mm -hmm. that's fixed back here and protruding towards the front. Maybe you have a, like a, a little bit of an auto. Okay. So, so maybe we uh, we use we use this uh, this hole too, and then we just go. That would be a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So, so then we, we just go here with uh, with these four these four screws and uh, and attach attach the nagel here. And so then you can um, maybe. If you're the kind of guy that needs uh, more hand protection or wants more hand protection, I'm not. I, I, I like to. I like to feel the, the hurt. <laughs> so am I. I. I like to feel the pain. <laughs> to know what I've done wrong. <laughs> uh, talking about pain, uh, let's 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 have a look at your at your wooden dusak. So um, I have not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I once I once tried them. I once tried them a long time ago. This was a very, the very, very early, early prototype yes. uh, at Leipzig. In Leipzig, right? Yeah. And, and this was very. They were they were hand they were cut. <laughs> they were hand cut out of ash wood. I, yeah. I didn't have um, any skills in machining back then. They were hand they cut. They were crude. Really, they were very crude. Yeah, they were hand cut with a reciprocating yeah. saw out of out of ash wood, and I rounded them off with a rasp. That, that's what got me started. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. It's so it's so cool and it's so so nicely so nicely rounded and um, if you could um, transfer smell uh, you would smell the, uh, that this is um, actually um, it's lime oil linseed boiled linseed oil Bo yeah it's, it's linseed oil it's beautiful it but looks that might beautiful be my hand sweat in the grip <laughs> <laughs> you, you smell like linseed oil cool sometimes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I love I love this oil. I, I use it for all my for all my wooden uh, wooden weapons. Um, That's great. And yeah. for for the shafts of uh, of the uh, of the axes, it's it's really good. Cool and thing about linseed oil is also that it hardens in the surface of yeah. the wood and actually makes the wood that it's that it's seeping into a lot tougher that way. Okay, so so these so you have your you have your name in here and your insignia and the insignia of your of your club, of right? My club, right, right. Um, so how do these feel? Okay, uh, I wanted to compare these. Um, they move nice. Actually, they move nice, and um, they are as um, they are as heavy. I, I would say I would say they are more more as heavy as like 
No, they are they are in between. They are in, be yeah. in between between the uh, between the leather and the rubber, and um, they are not forgiving. So when you hit with the wood, you are hit with wood, of course, and um, <laughs> it will it will hurt. Uh, but you can control them very good. And actually, I think we uh, we shot some we shot some uh, footage on this. Some footage of yeah, 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 we we showed this. <laughs> Um, so if someone if someone orders these, um, can you can you customize these? Yeah, they, uh, I have them in stock. Okay. Um, so I have ten of them mm -hmm. uncustomized in stock. Mm -hmm. But if you approach me directly, I can of course uh, customize these to your likings. And as I have done here, like put your logo into mm -hmm. there and put your whoops, need to turn it around, but put your name down into the dust egg. so you can. You can distinguish your Delsec from the other ones. Um, we found this quite helpful in our club because it's a very good training all, weapon. All the people in my club have, <laughs> yeah. have these. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think it's this is this is also a very good training weapon. Um, it they are also a lot cheaper uh, than than yeah. the professional uh, definitely version. So this one this one moves very fast and you can control it very good. But but this one. You, you can you can give it to someone who is not so proficient and um, and tell him make it slow and then uh, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't um, how can how can I tell um, you have more you have more respect uh, when you have uh, when you have something like like this wood in your hand so you don't want to really bash this one invites you to be fast um, but this one gives you more more respect in your hand to um, for, for the weapon itself. One effect that I observed with these wooden dosaks in our training is that people get a very good feel for where the weapon wants to move. Like people who have never touched a weapon, mm -hmm. really getting into like. Maya fencing that way, like nobody's told them that Maya fencing is looking that way, but they get into Maya fencing just touching this weapon. And so, all you Mayaists, <laughs> <laughs> look at this. <laughs> yeah. That's that's pretty cool. And mm -hmm. of course, if you're looking for a cheaper variant to yeah. to these ones, um, maybe for for implementing in your club's training, then yeah. these are definitely the way to go. Wooden ones to to try just to try out. Um, are you are you planning to um, to uh, to publish the the plans for for these so people can uh, can try to to make these themselves? Um, I I've thought about that. I haven't gotten around to it at mm. the moment. But uh, if I haven't got them on my site, mm. uh, you can always approach me and ask for the plans. Of course. Same same for me. So if you if you're interested in uh, in getting plans for the two second, if you want to build them yourself. Um, you you've seen uh, you've seen some some interesting interesting uh, uh, wooden versions from uh, from Brasilia and, and so um, they just tried it and it works so um, if you are interested you can just ask me too um, and get the plans and just make it yourself yeah I even have a video on my YouTube channel where I machine the stabilizer so you know how these are made <laughs> if you want to try it yourself. Mm -hmm. But you can also you can also instead of um, making it this, this sophisticated, you can also make this from wood. Yeah. Okay. So, and and this works too. It's not as durable, and it will not uh, it will not hold so long. I, I broke a lot of dosek in in the past. Um, but you have your own dosek, and you can use the leather again and uh, and build new stabilizers for this if you want. And the leather lives basically forever. Yeah, the leather leather lives very long. Um, the wood will break at some point. Wood will wood will always break. Okay, so this fly is really yeah. The really fly, fly is annoying, right? Yeah, yeah, we we were we were sweating. Uh. <laughs> but she likes it. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. She likes it. Yeah, yeah. Hi, little fly. And yeah, we should give it a name or so. <laughs> okay, Johnny. Um, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anything else we uh, we have to tell? Um, maybe you might take a little oh, breath. Oh yes, to, yes, to your left. yes. Oh, oh, oh. Let's let's look to the. What do we have on the left? Oh, what ah. will it be? What will it be? Oh, oh, it comes. It comes from above. <laughs> oh, or from below. Um, so, Patrick brought me actually the 
stabilizers for Mr. Bones. So uh, some of some of you may have may have followed our um, our little videos and uh, and posts for a longer time have seen um, the project of the Mr. Bones Messer. So um, what you see here are the stabilizers and um, I will see that I will... Um, you should actually pull the noggle out here. Oh yeah. Uh, you, do, do you want to show actually what you what you constructed there, please? If I can. <laughs> ah. Ah. It has a very close fit. So this is basically no, show, all, show, all show, the show parts disassembled. So this is like a oh, cross guard. Yeah. And Christian designed it the way that this is really looking like, you can see the shape of a bow. And this noggle is not yet representative of what the future product will be because um, this should be the shape of a skull actually. Mm -hmm. But um, I have fucked up like 15 <laughs> times now. <laughs> no, it's, it's like I fucked up three times. I sometimes guess. it's painful. Yeah. Sometimes it's just painful to me. It wasn't make. painful for me, but it was painful for the end mills I used. Yeah. They, they didn't last long. Maybe, maybe I will I will change the form so, so it will be easier. But this I one... Give it, a, give it another try. I haven't put a lot of time into this okay. um, after I broke the three but end this mills. one this one looks already very, very nice. Yeah, this is what they will, yeah. what they will be. So you... Yeah. Uh, they have a cutout in the yeah. in the stabilizer. So you put this here? No, you you, you put, put it, it through the stabilizer. That's like a puzzle. Yeah, so. a bit like a puzzle. Like you put it under the stabilizer, okay. and then you put the noggle through the stabilizer wow. and into the cross. Okay. And then there is two screw holes in the in the noggle, mm -hmm. which attaches the lower stabilizer, which also has two holes to the lower part of the cross guard and the noggle and they will be sandwiched that way. And um, you already made the blades for these, you yes, said? Yes, yeah, I think I think I will I will finish them then this, this week. And then we have uh, the first prototype of Mr. Bones. First prototype of Mr. Bones. This will be interesting. Yeah. This I'm will be very interesting. Definitely. I, I wonder how, how this one will move, but I, I will make another another video on, on that one. Or you can always put some lead in the tip. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, the weight the weight on, on Mr. Bones, and I, I just saw this uh, today because it's it's a year ago when I uh, when I did this this mess when I started this messer project. Uh, it's a year ago, and um, what I do is I put weight in the grip. I don't put it here, I put it in the grip, and I had weight here. I cannot put weight here, but I will put weight here, and this m makes it move very nice. So, and I, now I think my camera is already uh, already finished <laughs> with, uh, with the battery. So, Oops. I say, uh, yeah, thank you for visiting me. Thanks for having me. Jester, <laughs> this was very cool. Hunting yeah. an old man through his garden. <laughs> Thank and you for for letting me letting me come here. And um, yeah, we shall uh, do this again sometime. I guess. I mean, like if this whole COVID thing is over, we will definitely meet up on on several occasions. I guess. I hope so. And y you all also. So stay safe, people. And um, have fun. Cheers to you. <coughs>